Uh, hello, guys. My name is Miroslav Freyti from Digital Home Systems, and uh, I'm happy to present today a new webinar in a couple of minutes uh, for cool automation solutions and devices. Uh, our presenter will be Eugene Geckman. Uh, he's working as a solution engineer over there. A uh, couple of words about cool automation that company established in 2007 and based in Israel. Uh, they are quite, quite well known across the whole world, uh, providing solutions for BMS mostly systems and some smart uh, homes and integration with the Kinex, et cetera, et cetera. So while we are waiting for Eugene, uh, let me say a couple of words about DHS. Uh, which is Digital Home Systems, who is distributor of ZWAG devices and KNX products in Australia and New Zealand. We are experts in the smart home technologies in domestic and light commercial installations. We are offering uh, these products to professional stores across Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we are offering a uh, full range of Z-Wave products from multiple manufacturers, KNX devices from ABB, Comfort Click, Xenia, and now from cool automation as well we are providing technical and training uh, and uh, referral projects for the installers we're dealing with um, for all uh, clients working with us we are uh, offering that referral program and referring uh, clients who are asking for installation directly to guys in this area so this is uh, current schedules. We're doing uh, introduction to call automation with Eugene Yekman. And next one will be Discover Fibra Home Center 3. We have plans to do a few webinars after that about Z-Wave devices, but it will be published on our website. So you're happy to uh, log into our website and see when it will happen. So if you need to contact us, you're always welcome to call us directly in the business hours or send us emails. Uh, we are trying to respond as soon as possible, as soon as we're getting those emails. Um, today, Eugene will talk about uh, HVAC solutions and integration with smart homes and BMS. Uh, from my personal experience, um, when you're dealing with a smart home and the HVAC system, uh, it's quite complicated, uh, I can tell you, because uh, there is no standard in uh, HVAC industry at all. So every manufacturer doing their own way. They're doing uh, systems uh, only with their own design, and they're using only their standards, what they decide to be a standard. So it's a proprietary system. Sometimes uh, they're giving opportunity only to switch on off but no more than that. Um, if you're lucky if you have infrared channel, then you can use devices uh, like Remotec or from indices where you can just uh, have a bridge between infrared and other systems uh, like Z-Wave or Zigbee or similar. And then you can just use as, as a third party device between your uh, HVAC system and uh, Con uh, controller. So then you have uh, opportunity when you have API, if there is any API, and then you just can integrate it. But a lot of cases you have no such opportunity. Those systems uh, providing your only your interface, only their uh, cloud solution, and just very close system. So a few years ago, I think it's more than 10, 15 years ago few Japanese company decided they using a new protocol called uh, VRV. Uh, it's uh, called uh, variable refrigerating uh, uh, flow. And it's allowed you to manipulate with the controllers in one particular way. 
So you have a library with special commands. You can use those commands to uh, operate with the air conditioning and heating systems uh, both ways. So, and you'll see mostly uh, on the Australian market, new systems using that uh, protocol. Just when you're trying to understand what you can use, check if uh, those systems uh, are using the VRV protocol. Then it's became much easier. You'll find some solutions you can attach to a BMS system or a home automation system in a very simple way. Um, there are only a few players uh, like call automation, Intersys, and a few more companies who is providing third-party devices you can use uh, with BMS system. Uh, they have as well adapters for KNX or Modbus or something like that. So then you can integrate them completely in your project. How to start to identify if it's possible or not? Um, you need to check first uh, with manufacturer, second type of device, because if it's uh, bulkhead air conditioning, uh, it's very important if they have extra ports like infrared port, or they have only a thermostat on the wall. And uh, you're starting from that point. So because infrared ports, uh, the most uh, easy to do solution and the most cheapest solution in the market for the small budget, that's the only way to do it. And that device costs no more than 120, 150 people. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies, and, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks uh, for uh, Digital Home Systems for this uh, opportunity and platform. Uh, my name is Eugene. I'm going uh, to talk uh, today about uh, cool automation um, uh, services and uh, solutions. Uh, so uh, I'll start the presentation now. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, the company, uh, our uh, products and solutions, uh, some integration examples, uh, spe specifically integration uh, with uh, Fibaro and uh, Kenix, and uh, we will touch the Coolmaster Net uh, actual uh, working with the touch screen, and uh, in the end of this session, uh, questions and answers. The session is about uh, the presentation itself. It's about uh, 30 up to 40 minutes, and in the end uh, we will have a section uh, to ask uh, questions and uh, answers. Uh, I'm Eugene Gertman, pre-sale and solution engineer and cool automation. Uh, I'm uh, spe specializing in the control and uh, BMS uh, systems and have uh, electrical and uh, mechanical background. Uh, a bit about cool automation. Uh, we are founded uh, 30 years ago. We are based in Israel. The company is uh, privately held and uh, founded. Uh, we presenting uh, almost uh, at least in 100 countries uh, globally. And uh, our business model, it's uh, B2B. Uh, we are in uh, almost from the beginning uh, partnering with uh, digital home systems and uh, presenting in uh, Australian market. A couple of words about uh, our solutions. Uh, so uh, basically, everything starts from the cool cool edge devices. Most of you familiar with uh, Cool Master Net, uh, but it's uh, not only our solution. Uh, so, as a first step, we have our cool automation device. It connects either to VRF or uh, split uh, systems. You can see the right uh, side of the, the presentation. Uh, we allow uh, integration uh, with other systems, uh, for example, uh, zone controls, which are uh, uh, very common in Australia. And uh, uh, recently we added uh, options to external uh, sensor, for example, uh, door, switch, uh, 
CO2 and other external devices which can be directly connected um, to our uh, devices and uh, can be transferred uh, either to home automation or uh, through our cloud-based uh, services. Uh, so most of the integration examples uh, it's a direct connection with whole automation uh, with home automation or uh, building management systems it's usually network connection uh, through local router uh, so from here we just connect to hvac and directly to home automation uh, fibro knx uh, you name it uh, most of the home automation brands uh, have uh, drivers uh, to our automation devices, so the connection is uh, at least with non setup. Uh, from here, we can uh, another uh, block of uh, uh, user interface services. Uh, once our device, and this is in, I want to emphasize it's every device which is uh, connected to, to internet, it's automatically connects to our cool remote cloud platform. Uh, this is a platform held uh, on uh, Amazon. Uh, on Amazon, so it's uh, secured and, and, and uh, encrypted uh, with uh, with uh, uh, every advanced standards of uh, private security. Uh, so each each cool automation device automatically will connect it to our. Uh, Cloud platform, and uh, this is uh, this can help us uh, one to support you uh, through internet. We can connect to each device uh, globally wherever it installed. Just uh, connect to the internet, and we can uh, remotely connect and uh, you know, upgrade and uh, support and everything. Uh, from here, uh, we have uh, three different routes. Uh, first of all, we allow uh, integration with uh, known IoT clouds, uh, for example, uh, Google Home, Amazon Alexa, Ecobee Smart Thermostat, Apple Kids, and, and many others. It's a cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration with our cool, with our uh, cool remote apps. We allow third-party cloud uh, integration through our uh, API. And uh, most uh, familiar and common, this is our set of uh, apps. It's a mobile and desktop. So it doesn't matter if you are working with your uh, smart uh, mobile, uh, tablet or desktop, because all the, uh, all the apps are uh, web apps, so can be accessible from each uh, smart device. Uh, the first and uh, very known is uh, our control app. Uh, maybe some of you know as a cool remote app. Uh, recently, we launched a new control app, which will be replaced uh, the old. But uh, at least uh, for this year, we will run uh, both apps in, in parallel. So those who are using uh, cool remote can just uh, continue using, and we will uh, we will do the transition in uh, some point and. Uh, for sure, we will announce it and I'll uh, let you know. Uh, another, another very powerful thing of uh, control app, it's a um, it's very straightforward uh, installation tool. Uh, for example, uh, when you're connecting one of our devices uh, to HVAC and still didn't um, finish with the, the integration, or you want to check if the integration of with the home automation done properly, we can always uh, have a double uh, double check with our uh, cool app because everything is uh, syncs. Uh, so it's very very powerful uh, standalone or uh, remote uh, user interface tool which can be used uh, for installation or for uh, regular uh, HVAC basic control. Uh, we have another uh, two types of, uh, of applications. They are more uh, targeting for uh, other audience, but ju just to mention, we have uh, HVAC fa facilities management app. It's uh, like a uh, small but very straightforward HVAC 
BMS, uh, small BMS system that allowed to uh, uh, monitor and control uh, multiple sites, multiple systems, it's uh, notificates, you can um, manage users, and grant uh, permissions, and so on and so on. Uh, third app, it's a very powerful service provision app, but it's mainly for uh, professional HVAC uh, guys who are uh, expertizing in uh, VRF systems. So just to let you know. So in the right hand, we have cool automation devices, which are connected to HVAC, different HVAC types of the systems, VRF, VRV, splits, uh, zone controls, etc. Uh, local integration with home automation. Once it's uh, connect to internet, it automatically connects to our cool automation uh, platform. And from here, we have uh, several options. We have integration with uh, known uh, consumer IoT clouds uh, like uh, Amazon, uh, Apple, uh, Google Home, etc. We allow third party cloud uh, integration and uh, cool automation apps. A control app, HVAC a facilities management app, HVAC service app. Uh, just to empathize, uh, the control app, it's a very powerful tool uh, that can help uh, installations. For example, once the integration uh, not uh, completed yet, you can always uh, control from the control app and you can use uh, this uh, platform, it's uh, uh, from mobile or desktop, you can use this platform uh, to check uh, your installation, for example, to check if the integration uh, done properly. Uh, okay, so we have our CoolMasterNet. Uh, cool CoolMasterNet, it's a multi-brand device. Uh, it can support up to 256 indoor units. Doesn't matter which type of the system, it can be mixed with different VR, VRF, VRV brands. You can use uh, in the BOSS project, uh, for example, a Daikin and Mitsubishi, and it doesn't matter from, uh, the si from the side how it will be presented or cool master net screens. So everything is uh, unified, everything is normalized. Uh, once it's connected to home automation, for example, to FIBAR or KNX, you will see the totally same interface for different HVAC systems. Uh, so it's natively connects uh, to Fibaro. We have a partnership, a partnership with them. They are a developed uh, driver for cool automation devices. And later on, we will touch step-by-step uh, -step how to do the integration. Uh, for sure, it's um, compatible with KNX. Recently, we were uh, certifies uh, as a KNX partner. I will talk about that uh, later on. And uh, for, uh, of course, it supports uh, all our home automation brands. From the right side, you can see BMS uh, systems. Each of our cool automation device, either cool master net or cooling uh, hub and plugs or cooling bridge have the same integration capabilities from the home automation perspective and uh, from the BMS perspective. So we support Modbus, we support BACnet, uh, we have uh, BACnet uh, BTL cer certification. So it's very easy and uh, very powerful tools to integrate HVAC uh, your uh, projects. A couple of uh, words about uh, HVAC world. Uh, so this is our uh, uh, Playground, uh, we came uh, from uh, uh, from uh, mechanics, uh, so we have a very uh, strong background of uh, HVAC world. Uh, actually, the first uh, Cool Master Net was developed as a gate between uh, Daikin and uh, uh, home automation. Uh, so, if I can divide the uh, the, the whole uh, HVAC world, like uh, everything in the, in the life, it's divided uh, to three main parts. So we have uh, from uh, left side, we have uh, small uh, domestic usually systems like splits, mini splits, multi splits, and uh, zone controls are um, actually here in this section. 
Uh, for medium and uh, big scale, we have uh, VRF, VRV systems, and we have uh, other uh, usually uh, water-based systems like chillers, fan calls, uh, rooftops, uh, air handlers. Sorry. Just a second. Uh, yeah, so, uh, um, my apologies. Okay, so we have uh, uh, in big commercial projects, we have uh, chillers, uh, fankles, and uh, so on. Uh, it's, uh, it's very good to, to take uh, an overview. Um, so, and divide the HVAC systems by scales and uh, sectors. So, in the small sector, uh, like in previous slide, you will see uh, small systems, uh, for example, uh, like splits, multi-splits, uh, mini-splits, and uh, in front of each of those systems, you can see our uh, devices which uh, match this kind of uh, HVAC systems and integration. So in the, sm in the small sites, we usually will use cooling bridges, uh, mainly for uh, zone controls or cooling plugs and hub. In medium, sector, in, in medium uh, scale, it's a kind of mixed, uh, uh, mixed uh, sector and uh, mixed systems. Uh, so you can um, face uh, either uh, splits and multi-splits, but some uh, VRF uh, projects are uh, already touched on uh, this kind of uh, uh, solutions and projects. Uh, so here you can uh, meet uh, both the small devices and the cool master net, which uh, serves uh, VRF VRV systems. In the large scale sector, it's uh, mainly commercial projects. You can uh, find here uh, chillers, fan calls, and here we have our cooling bridge. It's a uh, it's solution uh, per project. So for example, if you have a project with a lot of fan calls, have solution for that or uh, chillers or rooftops and so on but uh, mainly uh, the solution for a big system as uh, native and directly it's a uh, cool master net which we working um, at least uh, 30 years uh, with uh, this device a couple of words about uh, the brands or uh, in your market uh, just to mention them uh, Daikin it's um, usually the leader in each region uh, then you have uh, Mitsubishi uh, Fujitsu is very strong and uh, Panasonic they are very strong on the Australian market uh, Toshiba LG uh, Mitsubishi Heavy and uh, you have um, Australian uh, brands uh, like Ektron Air and uh, Temperzone which uh, usually in the big uh, RF systems uh, works uh, with Hitachi so all the systems are compatible. Uh, if it's VRF, all, all of them compatible. Uh, for splits, most of the series and systems are compatible. The basic key is uh, if the air handler itself has uh, option, physical option to connect the local wire the remote, so we can work that. And the cool master net. So as I said, it's a uh, full uh, integration and control uh, device that can uh, replace in some uh, projects uh, original uh, central control, but uh, it can work together. So uh, if you have a new project and uh, you will see in build of materials central controller, uh, it's not a mandatory, but if, if there is or uh, HVAC contractor push it uh, to install it, no problem, we can uh, work uh, along in the central controller, but uh, functionally it can be replaced for sure. So it's natively connects to HVAC, uh, directly to VRF, VRV bus, without any adapters. It have a full bidirectional communication link, so you can control, you can monitor, everything will synchronize, and uh, for sure it have a uh, interface for uh, local interface for home automation and once it's uh, connected to internet 
automatically will find the, our cool remote cloud. Uh, so this is how it connected. The, as I said, it's directly connected to VRF. Here you can see VRF bus. Uh, we usually recommend, um, very strong recommend to connect at outdoor, but uh, in some small projects when uh, it's only one outdoor, it's all also can be connected uh, in this line, indoor, outdoor line. Uh, but uh, as a guideline, um, remember connect to outdoor um, units. Uh, and uh, from uh, the right side, again, supports KNX, fiber, or uh, home, other home automation and uh, uh, building management systems. Uh, next solution, it's a uh, cooling hub and plugged. Uh, this is a solution for uh, splits and uh, multi-split systems. Each cooling hub can uh, hold up to 10 plugs. Uh, recently, we uh, launched a wireless version. I will uh, going to touch about it in the next slides. And again, it have a uh, full uh, bidirectional communication links with the systems. It connect um, directly to indoors. And from here, it's the same like a cooling master, a cool master net. Uh, so how it works? A cooling hub, it's the hub device. It's uh, from um, a perspective of a home automation. It's the same like cool master net. Uh, so the main player of this system, it's a cooling plug. It's for system, they are non-VRF, so you can you can uh, connect in one place and see all the indoors. You have to create your own uh, network to be able to uh, central control uh, the split systems. So we will take our cooling plug, we'll directly connect through thermostat a uh, communication bus to the indoor, it can be connected uh, to cassette or other uh, split indoor. And we create our line, which runs between all the plugs to the hub. And uh, this is a standard daisy chain line, like you connecting um, um, several uh, VRF indoors. This is the same uh, line to wire, um, so just just, just connect the plugs with the hub and you are in. And again, from the right side, it's, that's, it's uh, totally the same. Uh, as I said, uh, recently we launched a wireless uh, solution. Uh, so the connection between the plug and the AC handler itself, it's totally the same, but the connection between all the plugs and the hub can be wireless. And a uh, very important point to mention it's our wireless proprietary network. We are using 2.4G mesh network, uh, similar to Zigbee, but it's not full Zigbee. And we are not depending on local Wi-Fi network. It's very important uh, because uh, uh, you don't want to mess uh, and have uh, phone calls from the customers why my AC is not working uh, because uh, they don't have, they change uh, I don't know, service provider of uh, internet services, and uh, you should now register again with uh, a new password in the, in the router. We avoid this situation totally because the connection between Plux and Hub, it's our local uh, wireless network. Um, each cool plug, it's a brand dependent because we are physically connected to different types of uh, indoors. Uh, most of global brands are supported like um, Daikin, Mitsubishi, Toshiba, Itachi and um, Fujitsu, all those Panasonic, all those brands are uh, have uh, interface for a thermostat so we can uh, work with. I am moving to next uh, slide. A cooling bridge. A cooling bridge is our solution for uh, devices uh, they are not um, we call them a other type of devices. They are not uh, VRF and they are not splits. Uh, usually the most known application, it's uh, ducted units uh, with zone controls. 
It's uh, very common in Australia and we work with uh, some uh, vendors and manufacturers and we support uh, some brands. I will show how to connect to each one. Uh, but again, once it's connected, it's totally the same like uh, previous uh, two guys, like uh, Cooling Hub, Cooling uh, and uh, Cool Master Net, the same integration capabilities. Uh, so uh, this all the options in, in general, uh, which uh, Cooling Bridge uh, supports. A uh, very important thing to mention, it's for each of type of integration, we need different cooling bridge uh, that will set preset for a different uh, application uh, because uh, a cooling bridge it's a wide uh, family of solutions uh, but each of uh, solution which be set uh, differently so in the left side you can see the application with um, radiant or electrical under for heating uh, in this case, we are connecting to a local IO card. Uh, we are working with some Australian brands like uh, SmartAmp and other, which allow directly connection of uh, up to eight uh, HVAC zones. I mean, eight thermostats, and it's uh, have um, all brain uh, that uh, controlling the. Uh, Underfloor heating system, and we just connect and can uh, uh, transfer it to home automation. So this application can give you access and option to control uh, the same zone. Uh, for example, if you have uh, in the same room uh, underfloor heating and uh, AC cooling or AC heating, you can group both uh, uh, solution to one zone and control it as a zone. So you can use cooling bridge for that, and for example, uh, cool master net uh, for uh, uh, VRV systems, and you can uh, integrate as as a one system in your project. Um, other option, it's uh, different kinds of uh, fan calls or water source, uh, water sources, uh, but here uh, each fan coil should have special controller that we are working with. We have uh, some uh, different brands that we can uh, advise uh, upon the request, but in general, uh, those uh, types, uh, Metaftec and uh, other, they are present in uh, Australia. Uh, other, uh, other application, it's uh, different types of the chiller, but again, it's uh, upon request, we, we should, uh, this is the risk, a relatively, new for for us uh, in recent year we are expanding our um, profile uh, with the chillers uh, but uh, first we need to check uh, if we can integrate uh, usually we can uh, because all our development uh, in-house we produce and develop everything uh, in one place so we are very uh, flexible and we can uh, uh, we can act uh, very quickly, I mean, uh, weeks and months, and uh, we're very sensitive to market needs. So once you have uh, projects or type of the system which can be interesting or potential uh, for the integration, we can check and um, can uh, adjust the cooling bridge. And uh, in most of the cases, uh, we will uh, establish uh, the integration uh, the different type of, the, of those systems. Uh, the first uh, part of uh, this integration, it's uh, different zone controls. Uh, next slides, I will go one by one per uh, manufacturer and explain uh, how it works and uh, what's, what's there, the limitations and the uh, benefits of it. Okay, I will start uh, with iZone. So uh, iZone uh, used the uh, with different uh, uh, AC systems, uh, but uh, it's it's not uh, brand specific. It's a, it's more general uh, uh, solution for uh, zone control. Uh, so the integration um, it's pretty easy. Uh, you you have to connect your your bridge, which uh, preset for ISON uh, to the ISON uh, to the ISON uh, router. 
And uh, from here, um, it's a kind of a plug and play installation. Um, uh, some points, general uh, points to zone controls. Uh, for each of a uh, zone control application, we can uh, close and open the zones. So um, we can uh, set temperatures and, and modes. Uh, but uh, for example, uh, fan speed or uh, some of uh, specific um, features of uh, zone controls can be set only in the zone controllers itself and this is limitation uh, usually by the manufacturer and not by us so what they are um, open for us we are trying to uh, to connect and integrate uh, to home automation and uh, uh, to our devices so in uh, each of those slides um, you can find uh, on the right side uh, the limitation that are specific uh, for the systems but in general, on, off, and set temperatures will uh, always uh, uh, work. Uh, but uh, fan speeds or modes, uh, in some um, cases, uh, can be changed uh, only in the zone controllers itself. Um, next example, if it's a Daikin zone control. So here, uh, again, we connect. Uh, it's like cool plug on p1 p2 uh, but uh, in zone controls it's a bit a different uh, interface and uh, we have uh, some of the limitation uh, for example uh, if you have uh, um, more than one panel original panel it can be it won't uh, work uh, only one original panel of uh, zone control can work with our uh, cooling bridge and again, we can turn it on and off, uh, but modes and fan speeds uh, can be controlled uh, only, on, only for a unit and not for all the zones. Uh, so once we are connecting here, we can control the unit itself, but if you have uh, several zones, we can just uh, turn it on and off the zones, but the settings of the unit can be changed, but not the settings of, of each of the zones. Um, we have another uh, device for uh, Mitsubishi zone controls. It's work totally the same. It's connect uh, to M1, M2. I, I don't have a diagram here, but they have uh, the same limitation and the same type of uh, connection. And again, once it's connected, it's like uh, all our uh, other cool automation device from the perspective of uh, uh, home automation and uh, our uh, cool remote controls. And uh, next example, it's uh, Actron uh, systems. Uh, here we have uh, two types, two different types of uh, Actron series. Uh, so it's divided here on uh, this table. Uh, some of the models are not listed here and they are uh, also supported. Uh, so if you have a project with uh, Actron, uh, I recommend uh, to check with uh, team of uh, digital home systems or uh, directly with us so we will uh, verify and uh, confirm uh, in those kind of integration uh, we connect to additional BMS card and there are two types of uh, cards depends on the series and the or, and the actual systems themselves uh, most of the systems uh, they have uh, this kind of interface it's a kind of uh, Modbus interface and it uh, supports uh, most of uh, new series. And uh, for classic series, they have a bit uh, different uh, card, but uh, from our perspective, it's the, totally the same connection. And uh, here, uh, I, I don't go uh, over all the functions, but again, on off always working and uh, it's have uh, different uh, limitation and features that can be uh, allowed or not allowed here. Um, so, uh, just to summarize this part of uh, our devices, uh, because we collect in each uh, webinar the same uh, type of the questions, uh, we decide to put uh, this slide here. Uh, so, where 
actually our products will be installed. Uh, so if you are working with Coolmaster Net, it's usually usually will be installed in electrical cabinet next to home automation controller uh, or uh, control cabinet if you're working with uh, bigger systems. Uh, I very recommend to install it uh, in the accessible place uh, because of uh, Coolmaster Net uh, touch screen. It's uh, always to, good to have a plan B um, because in the case there is uh, any problem with internet or local network, you can always uh, control the AC from its uh, touch screen. It allows full control. You can uh, uh, turn uh, on and off each individual indoor. You can set temperature, you can change modes, uh, change fan speeds, and all basic control options can be done directly from the its screen. Uh, so it's um, very important to to install it in very accessible place. Um, and the connection to HVC, as I said, uh, we recommend to connect to outdoor units, but in some small projects, when you don't have uh, access to outdoor units, um, uh, we allow connection uh, to a VRF line, which runs between outdoor and indoor. Uh, but in those cases, um, we recommend um, to check with us uh, before if there are kind of limitations and uh, functions that uh, will all, uh, won't work uh, in this kind of uh, connection. Uh, cooling plug and hubs. So plug will directly connect to the door. It's a small device. Uh, if it's a ducted unit, uh, it just can be hide it uh, somewhere in the ceiling. It's come, it comes with a magnet or a sticker, so it can be sticked directly to air handler itself. Uh, and uh, if uh, you're working with a mini split with a wall mount, it's uh, enough small to hide uh, uh, behind the, the decorative uh, um, cover of uh, uh, the air handler. Uh, all those plugs will be daisy chained and connected to cooling hub. And, and hub itself, it's like cool master net will installed uh, somewhere in the uh, server's room, um, somewhere uh, next to home automation main controller. A cooling bridge, cooling bridge, it's uh, like a cooling plug in this, uh, in a cooling hub in this case, it will be directly connected to, indoor, uh, to zone controller, if you are working, for example, with the application of zone controls, it's directly connected to zone control, uh, but it uh, will be installed, uh, again, next to the home automation controller and not uh, next uh, to the zone controller because the zone controller can be installed somewhere in the ceiling and uh, you definitely have, uh, an have need access to this device because it's an integration device and uh, it should be connected uh, to local uh, home network, uh, to router and uh, there to home automation or to our uh, cool remote cloud. A couple of words about uh, our uh, control app. So uh, this is how it looks like. It's a um, very straightforward um, App, it's very easy to work. It's very intuitive. So you can uh, you can see here uh, different types of uh, interface. But in general, you can see each of your um, indoor units here. Uh, you can uh, turn on and off. If there is any kind of error, it will be uh, shown here. Uh, if you are uh, clicking on it, so you have this kind of interface. You can change. Um, um, modes, uh, fan speeds, temperature for sure, it uh, shows the room temperature, temperature and it allows uh, scheduling and uh, kind of usage and uh, notification. So you can see all its features here. Uh, this is how it's uh, work as uh, shown in the first slides. Just connect one of our devices to HVAC, connect to internet and use control app. The registration process is uh, really um, about one minute, not more. Uh, I will show in uh, one of the next slides how to do it, but it's uh, really 
very easy and uh, intuitive. And uh, again, very strong point you can use. We are recommend to use this app uh, for your installations and commissioning because uh, it's uh, straightforward. It can work like standalone. Um, so just do it. Uh, another uh, feature that we are along its uh, integration with vo uh, with voice controls. Uh, the process it's um, pretty easy. Um, it's like uh, here. Uh, first step it's connect to HVAC. Second step it's connect to our cloud and uh, just link uh, your uh, account. Uh, for example, Google Home or Amazon or other, it doesn't matter. Link the account uh, to our uh, cool remote. Uh, you have an option in your cool remote app uh, to link with any kind of uh, voice control. In our website, uh, we have uh, manuals how to do it uh, step by step for each type of uh, those um, uh, those types of uh, voice control systems. So once it's installed, it's pretty easy. It's like, you know, hey, Google, set office, or Alexa, turn on bedroom, and this is how it works. Very easy, uh, and it can work uh, in parallel with all your um, home automation uh, or other uh, local uh, controls. Just integration with, and uh, because it's um, connect to our uh, cool automation edge device on the field, which actually, connect to AC units, all the commands from here will be synced in uh, each of uh, interface that you have. If it's a local thermostat, if it's central controller, if it's a home automation controller. So once you are controlling from here, everything will be synced and um, uh, transferred and uh, shown uh, in each of uh, in each of the devices. Um, in this point, I want to pass uh, the microphone to, to, home, uh, to Digital Home Systems team, and they will talk uh, about uh, integration with Fibaro. Uh, so, uh, basic introductions. Um, I'm Mark, head of technical support, Digital Home Systems. Um, uh, we're currently for this one for the Fibaro integration. We found there were a couple of issues with the current Fibaro plugin that's available. Uh, for cool automation units. Um, so instead, we made a essentially a, um, not a plug-in version, but a more easily configurable version for it, which is what we're going to be covering now. Um, so if you just want to go to the next slide there, Eugene. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. So essentially, how the Fabara unit communicates with the cool automation is via TCP IP. So most basic terms for it, it uses your local area network just to communicate directly to your in between your Fabara unit and your cool automation. Let it be your cooling bridge, your cooling hub, or your cool master net. They all use the same basic uh, coding structure for their actual control methods. So the same plugin would be used for all three of those units. Um, each one of those units as well is able to support uh, multiple lines on each individual unit themselves. So if you have three systems, you'd have three devices that are all controlled individually. So on, off, temperatures up and down, pretty much basic way of communication. Um, there's also two-way communication. So essentially anything you put through your app on your uh, phone will go and essentially update in your Fabara app. Uh, same if you use voice control and any updates you put through on your Fabara uh, home controller as well. So if it goes through any automation changes, we'll also update your phone app as well. Um, just want to change the next slide. Mm -hmm. So that's what essentially your uh, your actual virtual device in your Fabara unit will look like. Um, that's the most basic bare bones one. So you have your on off commands, your temperature up downs, um, low, medium, high auto commands, and also heat and cooling auto dry. Uh, do you want to go to the next one, Eugene? Yeah. So mm -hmm. setting up is pretty easy. Um, once you already have a pre existing automation unit uh, for cool automation units, um, there's a lot of documentation, and you've actually seen some of it previously as how to set them up, so they're pretty good. Um, all you need to do is download the Cool Automation Virtual Device, which we can supply to you pretty easily. Or if you're using a Cool uh, MasterNet, you can use the Fabara plugin as well. 
Um, and all you need to do is find the cool, uh, your cool automation unit's IP address, which very good is actually displayed on the actual LED displays on the units themselves. So on your uh, what is it? on your cool master, it'd be down the bottom right hand corner, which is very clearly displayed. And on your uh, cool, like your small modules, such as your bridge and your hub, they will actually just cycle through and they'll eventually pop up with an IP address. Uh, next one, please, Eugene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So adding the actual virtual device is a pretty easy to use system. Uh, we designed a template that can just be uh, very easily imported into your Fibonacci controller itself. Um, it only takes a couple of seconds for it to actually load through. And once it's done that, you're able to start configuring the device. So if you want to go to the next one. Yeah. So what you do require is you need to insert your IP address, which is the little X's that you can see on that slide. Um, and also the TCP port that is used for communication to the device directly, which is 10.10.2. Um, due to this not being a plug-in device, you will actually need to manually change your line references um, to match what it actually has. Your line references can be very easily found on cool master net units because it actually tells you exactly what line does. So you can simply just change what reference for the L2.039s uh, to whatever your one is. So let that be L3, L1, or L5, because you can do KNX stuff as well. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. The main, um, due to it not being used as a plugin, uh, the good thing regarding it is you can actually adjust it however you want for the device. So if you want to add in additional lighting controls, so as an example for the one we have here, um, this one's actually able to open and close windows in the room. Um, you could also add in automation steps such as when your actual, um, what is it, whenever it goes onto your on state, so it becomes active, heats or cools, it can actually automatically close your windows because you're able to get every single status from that cooling unit actually fed directly into your fire unit itself. Um, you can also do things such as adding temperature sensors where your actual controller will uh, automatically turn off your coolant unit once it's reached your desired temperature in your room to sort of save power and everything. Uh, okay, this, is, uh, this was a very detailed uh, how to do step-by-step -step, uh, with Fibro. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for helping for, uh, with that. Uh, another uh, integration uh, option it's a uh, KNX. Um, as I said recently, we certified uh, as a KNX uh, partner. Uh, as a KNX partner, um, in next few weeks, uh, we will be listed uh, on ETS uh, library as well. But uh, in the meanwhile, we developed uh, our uh, tool, uh, which um, a lot of integra integrators globally found very useful. Um, if you're comparing to ETS, uh, to interface with uh, HVAC systems. So we are recommend if you want, yes? Uh, if you want, you, you can use our uh, uh, terminal tool, can be do downloadable from here. And uh, if not from uh, the direct link, you can go to our uh, product page of each of our devices and then go to uh, KNX integration guidelines and you will find uh, all step-by-step uh, -step, uh, how to do it with our uh, terminal software and you can uh, download from uh, from there as well. Uh, so just uh, a general idea, each of our devices can be, here is the ex uh, example of uh, cool, cool master net. So in each of our devices, uh, KNX model can be added. So you just uh, order with or without KNX. Uh, I think uh, digital uh, <coughs> home systems, they are uh, stocking uh, each type of our products with and without uh, KNX. So it's um, in, in most of the cases, it will be for a local purchase. But if not, it's uh, about a couple of days. Uh, just add them and we will send them uh, the device uh, with uh, KNX uh, compatible and enabled. It's a just piece of hardware that we are uh, adding to each of our cool automation devices. And again, you can use uh, both KNX or other type of home automation or uh, control it. Just another uh, 
it's the same product with another uh, integration option. Uh, so we are connected directly uh, to the bus. If you are working with our uh, software, uh, it's a, the basic command. Uh, I don't go over all those commands uh, because uh, uh, you can click here and uh, find uh, all uh, uh, integration guidelines. And um, if not from here, in the end of uh, this presentation, you have a page with all uh, useful links. Uh, I will go over it in, uh, in the coming minutes. Uh, but if not, each of uh, documentation is uh, published on our website. And we have uh, additional wiki page. So if you're going to our website, uh, just go to our wiki page and all documentation, uh, all drawings, uh, installation guidelines, and uh, all uh, technical uh, parameters and documentation related to all our cool automation devices can be found there. Uh, a couple of words about uh, CoolMasterNet. Uh, because this is the this is the guy that you are usually face uh, in the field, and it has uh, some features, some very very nice and strong features. So uh, first, uh, CoolMasterNet had uh, eight uh, HVAC ports uh, from L1 to L7. It's uh, it's general ports. Uh, it's mainly targeted for different systems. Port 8 is a USB port uh, because uh, some of the vendors, uh, for example, Fujitsu, uh, they need the kind of uh, adapter. It's a USB echelon uh, stick can be uh, purchased locally from Fujitsu or um, from echelon directly uh, because uh, Fujitsu's uh, line it's based on loan so it's a different type of uh, connection and they are uh, exception of other uh, vrf vrv uh, manufacturers that uh, using uh, standard um, i mean not the standard protocol each of them use different protocol but they use standard hardware uh, to run um, their communication so uh, here you can find each of the brands it's not all the brands, only the main brands listed here. Uh, you can find all the brands uh, on the installation guide. But in general, uh, L, L1 to L2 ports will be more targeting on uh, Daikin, Mitsubishi, Panasonic, Toshiba, or Hitachi. Uh, ports uh, L7, it's a default port. L7, L6, uh, 4, and 5, it's a kind of um, like a Modbus. So those device, uh, those manufacturers, manufacturers uh, which uh, base their communication of this type of uh, hardware, uh, will be found uh, on uh, their ports. And um, you can change, and you can mix. Uh, I will explain the next uh, slides. So this is the very important part. Uh, but remember, once you are ordering the product uh, for a special uh, project. We are uh, preset, uh, so you don't need to deal with that at all. Just connect the communication. You will see all the indoors will pop up here. And that's all. You don't need to set up nothing. Uh, a bit small zoom on, on its screen. So in the, in the upper uh, bottom uh, bar, you will see uh, those uh, kinds of the ports which are uh, actually connected. For example, in this example, uh, here it's Daikin connected and LG. So once uh, CoolMasterNet auto detecting any type of uh, VRF system connect to its physical port, uh, you will see here on the on this bar number of units which are uh, detected, number of units which are connected. And the brand, so it it's an automatic process. You don't need to set up anything. Once you connect something, and will it will be auto detected and will be listed here. Okay. Uh, here you have a very useful uh, button all off and all on, uh, because in some uh, some places, for example, offices or a house, um, in the end of the day, you just want to turn off all your um, 
uh, HVAC systems and you don't want to open your app, you don't want to go to your home automation, you want something on the wall kind of switch. So this is a very useful uh, button. If it's in accessible place, uh, you can just uh, use it all off, all on, very easy. Okay, uh, in this part of uh, CoolMasternet screens, you will see all the units listed here. So it can be up to 256 units, as I said. Uh, just scroll uh, this bar and you will see everything here. Uh, what it's, uh, what's the meaning of those numbers? Uh, always the first one, it's an actual physical port which unit it's connected. For example, here it's, in this example, it's Daikin. So L1 means Daikin system connects to L1 port. And uh, the, the address of the unit is 101. Uh, uh, those numbers which we are detecting as, a, as a addresses of the units. We are, not, uh, grant, uh, we are not granting them the addresses, we're just reading the addresses and transferring, uh, show, uh, first we are showing uh, here, we are transferring to home automation or to our uh, app. And uh, in your user interface, you can give the names, you can change the names, but those are addresses which are detected from the system itself. We are not touching them, just here, just to let you understand how it works. It's, uh, the order is alphabetical, so if you have uh, more than one system, for example, you have Daikin connected to L1 and LG connected to L7, First, you will see the L1, like you see here, and after that, all the L7-related uh, units. Okay, uh, another very important point, um, which uh, Mark mentioned on his part, uh, just connect full automation device to router and you will get you, its IP. Uh, uh, we enable our devices as DHCP. So you don't need to touch it. For, uh, if, only if you need to change to static IP, uh, I, show, I, I will uh, explain how to do it. But uh, in most of the cases, it's, uh, it, received, uh, it receives uh, the IP address uh, from, the, uh, from the router. It's automatic process. You don't need to deal with it. And you will see the address in the... Um, uh, in the bottom bar, in the in, in the right side of bottom bar. Uh, now, uh, this sign is very important uh, as well. Once CoolMasterNet, or we are talking about CoolMasterNet, but the sign will appear, uh, it's a small sign will appear in all of our devices. It's in CoolMasterNet, it's uh, just from here. Once the device connects to internet, it automatically will, uh, found, uh, will find his route to our uh, cool remote uh, cloud. So once it's it's uh, connected to the cloud, you will see this kind of sign. So it's uh, your uh, immediately feedback that you can uh, control uh, everything from uh, your mobile, from your app. You can download your app. You can understand that the connection to cool uh, uh, cool automation cloud it's uh, proper. So this is very important uh, sign. Uh, here is the MAC address of uh, CoolMasterNet, uh, so it's uh, easy, it's uh, unique to each uh, one of uh, the devices. Uh, another important point, it's not shown here, it's shown, just I, I go here, in the back of CoolMasterNet and of our uh, each of our devices, you will see a, a QR code, you will see here in this part its unique uh, ID and PIN. Uh, you need those, uh, for example, if you need our support and you open the ticket, uh, you should uh, uh, list it in the, in the web form. Uh, so just remember that, uh, that the address itself is here it, in the front, but the PIN is behind, uh, behind the Coolmaster Net and uh, behind in the back of each each device. So if, if you are, uh, it's again another reason uh, to put CoolMasterNet in an accessible place. If for some reason you will need any kind of our remote support, 
Uh, just remember and uh, you know don't bury it uh, somewhere on the ceiling uh, just uh, remember maybe in uh, one day you will need it uh, here is the example uh, I go very quickly over it uh, how to change HVC lines uh, the process is really easy and uh, intuitive uh, first you're going to gearbox here in the left uh, uh, upper side of uh, Coolmaster Net. This is uh, uh, this is the settings uh, button. Okay. So first, once you are clicking here, you will see this this menu. Uh, for this kind of setup, you will need the uh, HVC lines. This is the list of all the lines. Just select one uh, relevant from L to L1 to L8, and um, this is the screen of uh, each of HVC line. Uh, here you don't need to touch um, anything. This is does uh, this is the default settings. Uh, what is important if you want to change or open an uh, additional line, or if you want to change line from I don't know Daikin to Toshiba, uh, the default situation. If 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 the master net is set for Daikin, you will see this on. Just turn it on and uh, just turn it off and turn on. The other, uh, brand, for example, if you want this is Sanyo here or uh, Mitsubishi Electric or whatever. Um, because uh, some, the cool master net is usually installed uh, in the customer houses and we want to avoid people uh, to touch and uh, harm and damage uh, the configuration because, you know, people are... Um, uh, some of the people working uh, play with the gadgets. We have a uh, double proof. It's a switch position. Uh, so each HVC line correlates with uh, the special uh, switch positions. The switch positions and the lines, it's listed on the installation guide of uh, Coolmaster Net. It's uh, accessible on our uh, website uh, and uh, you have uh, in the uh, next slides you have direct link uh, to download so once you are dealing with that remember it's not only to change here and uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, also to change the position of uh, deep switches so uh, be aware of it uh, this is the situation if you are working uh, in um, sites uh, which are not allowing uh, DHCP, for example, I don't know, banks, maybe military, or any kind of uh, systems that have uh, managing uh, their network systems and they want to grant, uh, for example, unique uh, IP address for each device installed in their network. Uh, so, and uh, you need to put uh, static IP to Coolmaster Net. So it's very, very easy. First, if you remember this button, you go in here, you will see this menu and going to network settings. And you will see uh, this bar. So as a default, it's DHCP on. So it receives the IP address from the router. But if you want to manually change it, uh, just uh, disable it and um, put it manually. It's very, very easy. Uh, uh, the last uh, the last example it's how connect uh, cool master net and for sure it's for all the all the devices how to connect it uh, to our uh, cool automation uh, apps so it's automatically will connect it to our cloud but as a user interface you should open the app and link the the device itself uh, to your app and account. So if you are working uh, for for first time, uh, you don't need at least to do nothing. Just scan. For, for sure, the Coolmaster Net or other device should be connected to internet. This is the mandatory. And uh, the second step, you can just scan the QR code and it will be retrieved all the details from the device itself to your... Uh, user interface of the app so once you are doing it it will open a browser in your mobile or um, 
tablet or whatever, uh, it will open uh, the browser and uh, you will see all details, uh, serial and pin code um, listed in this kind of uh, menu. And uh, the last thing you need is just, uh, uh, you know, user, login, password, and that's all. So it's it's kind of a registration, very, very easy, very straightforward. Just do it once and you will see it's, it's really easy. Uh, the other way, it's not uh, scan and open the browser. You can just uh, download the app uh, from uh, Market or Google Play and uh, just do the same procedure by opening the app. You will open the app and uh, scan and and, and and the same, uh, totally same process. Okay, uh, we have our demo in the website. So if you are going to click here, you will see demo of uh, our app, how it looks like. So you can show to your customer or you can play with that. It's a actual, uh, different actual systems connected in our office, but it's uh, on the demo mode. So you can play and change and uh, do whatever you like uh, with the settings. It doesn't, uh, make any harm on that. A uh, last uh, section uh, of the presentation. Uh, this is the selection process. Uh, so if you work, if, if you are uh, familiar with our products and uh, you're working with um, for uh, uh, several projects and you are uh, confident uh, to select the devices and the solution by yourself, uh, this is very easy guide how to do it. So first step, it's understand um, which brand you are working with. The second step, it's understand which type of HVC system, if it's a VRF, it's, if it's split, if it uh, has zone controllers, yes or not, because some of the splits, they are uh, ducted units. They are, as a definition, splits, but they have uh, another zone controls. So you need to understand because uh, for example, if you if you're working with zone controls, you need the bridge. If you are working uh, without zone controls, you will need the plug. Uh, for the it's it's the it can be same terminal on the HVC systems. For example, if it's Daikin, it will be the same P1, P2. But uh, for the zone controls, you will connect that this device. And without zones, you're going with the plug. So understand which type of the system and and. Uh, what, what type of the control you are dealing with. And then um, next step is understand how many zones you need, how many indoor units. For example, if it's a VRF, VRV, uh, most likely you will go with Coolmaster Net and 99% um, of the times it will be less than the capability of Coolmaster Net. So it's okay. But if you're going with the splits, it have a kind of uh, limitation, for example, each hub can hold up to 10 uh, plugs. So if you have more than 10, you can work with the plugs, but you can connect to Coolmaster Net or use uh, two hubs. Uh, so it, it's, it's pretty uh, flexible. And uh, from here, you can select your product. Uh, I've listed here uh, some um, uh, very common uh, brands, but uh, we have another brands here, for example. If you're going here to product page, you will see compatibility list uh, of each of our devices. And if your system is not there, uh, just uh, contact uh, with Prisil team of uh, digital system or our Prisil team, and we will advise because we are we are trying to update uh, each of uh, compatibility system on our uh, website, but um, very. Uh, dynamic situation and uh, some of the series or some of the models can be missed. So it can be supported, but not listed on our website. So once you have the system and you are not finding uh, here or here, uh, I advise to check with us. And uh, this is the flow for those who are dealing with our devices and feel confident to, to select by themselves. Uh, but this is the most uh, common flow. Uh, once you don't want to decide and you want uh, our uh, device or uh, your dealer device, just get the HVC list, 
share with Mark or uh, Slava or uh, your contact in the digital home systems and they will advise our solution and um, in some of the cases they will uh, consult us but the the process is very smooth here uh, here's the page with the links you can uh, use uh, those who are using uh, wireless solution we have here uh, youtube how to pair uh, plugs and hub but again if you're um, ordering for a special product uh, project we will uh, pair uh, in advance, so you don't need to touch them at all. Uh, so we are here in the end of our presentation. Uh, I will list uh, and summarize uh, some points uh, which were raised up. So what are the benefits of using our uh, solution? First of all, we are strong with fiber we are stronger for, uh, with KNX. Uh, we are partnering uh, digital home systems um, almost since the beginning we have um, very good uh, installation base globally and in australia we support all, um, most of the hvac systems we have same integration proce procedure for all supported hvac devices by different brands it doesn't matter what's installed in the field one school automation device selected and installed from your point it's the totally the same integration you did it once just save the setup next time you will see this the same the same the same procedure maybe one uh, things will change it's the ip address because we are depend on, on local uh, router but that's all the difference it's very easy it's plug and play installation it's auto detect uh, cool master net especially it's auto detect uh, all units just connect the connection uh, just connect the communication bus to the right place it's it's very easy for example if you're ordering for a special device we put a little uh, stick uh, next to the port uh, so you're not going to confuse if you're working with Daikin, you will see the small stick of Daikin DK. It will be sticked on the Coolmaster net uh, next to its uh, terminals. Just wire it to wires. Very easy. You don't need to set up at all. Uh, we can support your HVAC side uh, in some cases where you don't have uh, good support from your HVAC contractor or in some uh, cases the HVAC contractor he's already left and uh, once um, uh, once the device is connected to internet we can remotely connect we can uh, check we can advise we have very strong uh, HVAC background this is our uh, this is our first speciality uh, so if you need the kind of you know advice you will see for example, error, uh, and you don't understand what has happened, you can always uh, advise us. We have a very efficient tech support. We are using ticket systems. So go to our website, open a ticket. Very, very easy, very straightforward, and we will try to respond as, uh, as quick as possible. But we are in the Israel, so there's a small delay, you understand. Now we have a uh, 10 hours um, difference, but we are uh, trying to respond in the same day. Uh, I raised here uh, some of common uh, asked questions from other uh, webinars and meetings and uh, so on. So I'm going to go over them a couple of minutes. Uh, maybe you have uh, the same questions, so you will hear the answers here. Uh, the first one, it's uh, very common. If I'm working with uh, home, uh, with home automation with uh, HVAC and there is um, local thermostats, there are central controls, uh, so do I need to remove it or they can uh, remain? So we can work in love with everyone. So if there is, don't touch it. You can work in parallel. It uh, doesn't matter if it's Coolmaster Net or Cool Plug. If it's Coolmaster Net, we just connect uh, next to central controller. 
uh, we can uh, work together. Uh, cool master net will automatically will be the slave if he doesn't feel the central controller next to him it will be automatically switched to master so it's okay you can uh, remain you can uh, remove uh, for new projects again if it's uh, in build of materials and uh, it's it's not a mandatory because uh, hvac guys they are trying to push it but uh, if it's not uh, if you are going to advise your customers if if it's uh, mandatory or not so it's not and the same with uh, thermostats and uh, leave them you can uh, uh, replace them we connect in parallel so it can be work it's a uh, bi-directional each of our actions done from home automation through our devices which will be immediately reflected of the local uh, thermostat so it's up to you or up to your customers and the point of uh, of temperature measurement of uh, on the uh, hvc side. so if the wire remote is removed um, the question is okay so where's the actual the temperature will be measured in vrf in all inverter systems there is usually at least one, but usually two types of uh, temperature reference. Once, and it's in every indoor unit, it has uh, own uh, ducted uh, internal sensor. So once you have more than, uh, more than one, for example, you have thermostat on the wall, uh, you can set the unit or HVAC installer will set the unit which the temperature reference takes the AC units. Uh, so it's a, it's a matter of uh, local settings, but if you are removing the HVC units, automatic will be switched to its internal sensor. So it, it can be removed. Everything is good. I can tell you more of that. If you want to use external temperature sensor, for example, um, you know, for any kind of uh, design uh, reasons, uh, the customer or the architect want to remove. Uh, thermostat because I don't know it's ugly it's not up to Feng Shui I don't know um, and you want to measure uh, not in the duct because uh, for example if you're working with the uh, heating uh, as you know the heat is going uh, up and uh, the right uh, measurement of uh, temperature uh, when you are uh, you know in the six feet high or uh, five feet high it's a uh, it's a bit different that uh, measuring the in the duct itself uh, so in the, in those cases uh, you can use external uh, temperature sensors uh, or our uh, temperature sensor if we supply with our cool plug uh, as an optional device external uh, temperature sensor so this issue is usually solved but if you're facing this kind of situation, you can always advise us. The next question is Cool Master Net uh, can work uh, simultaneously with different systems? The question is yes. Um, so, very, very easy. Yes, it supports, it can uh, work with uh, different brands, different systems. It can uh, even work with different types of the systems. For example, you have project with VRF and uh, i don't know in guest house you have uh, or in basement you have uh, one small split unit so you can connect cool plug to split unit cool master net to vrf and you can wire the cool plug to cool master net so it can work with two type of uh, systems different at all and from your uh, perspective like always you will see one interface it will just another indoor that's all. Uh, next question. If there are additional components required from the HVC vendors uh, for integration with the cool automation and, and, and home automation? Um, usually not. In 99% of uh, cases, not. Uh, only if you work with, uh, for example, Fujitsu VRF, as I mentioned, there is an additional uh, usb adapter but it's not uh, because of cool automation even if you are using uh, fujitsu central controller you will need this kind of uh, interface so this is 
so in Fujitsu VRF, yes, in other systems, uh, no. Uh, but if you have uh, doubts, you can always uh, advise. But in general, we connect directly to VRF, VRV bus, without any additional, you know, Modbus, BACnet, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, okay. Uh, next question. If if I use Coolmaster Net and I connect only in one place, how I can control every indoor individually? Uh, the question is pretty easy. In VRF VRV systems, each of indoor devices, each of indoor units have uh, has its unique address, and uh, you don't need to deal with that because it's part of HVAC installation. It's usually the address itself is automatically given by outdoor or can be manually changed uh, by HVAC installer. So what it's, uh, we're just uh, reading the address and transfer it. So once you're connected, uh, connecting Coolmaster Net, you will see each of the units, everyone can be controlled individually, control and integrate individually. Uh, the next uh, question, uh, the last actually, it's uh, what I already touched in the previous slide. What happened if HVAC contractor left or um, doesn't support? Uh, I cannot promise you 100% uh, solving all the problems, but uh, in most of the cases we can advise, we can uh, consult, or we can address you to the right uh, source and uh, we can uh, detect uh, detect the problem and uh, we can for sure con connect remotely and uh, we can advise you uh, so i'm done with uh, that kind of, uh, <coughs> of with that presentation a couple of words uh, what it's going to be with the uh, cool automation uh, we are going to expand our uh, wireless solution we are always expanding our uh, compatibility list. Um, the goal, the, the dream is to be one, stone, one stop shop for all HVAC system. In some of the region, as, especially in Australia, we are, I think, uh, in, the, in the finish line uh, because most of the systems are uh, supported. Uh, zone controllers, if you have a fan called chillers, most of them uh, supported. All VRF supported, and most of the splits and uh, mini splits, at least those uh, uh, who has a um, physical interface, so we can uh, connect. And uh, for sure, we are going to develop our uh, cool remote services. It's uh, more focused on uh, HVC, but uh, just to let you know, uh, as mentioned in the in the beginning, we have uh, different uh, apps on a subscription base uh, for uh, management and uh, service provision. Uh, the control app is free for charge, just to mention it again. Uh, so thank you very much for this uh, platform, for this stage. Uh, I hope I was uh, not so boring. I uh, forgive about my English and accent. It's not my mother language, but I'm uh, trying. Uh, so, you. Slava, I... Thank you, Eugene. All very knowledgeable. And uh, I bet uh, our installers will ask a thousand questions after that. Uh, thank you for, for the big presentation. And uh, obviously, we'll talk to you quite soon. I believe uh, we will have a very new system quite soon for Australia as well. Um, we have a few questions. It is overkill for small installations. Uh, I have to tell, it's not for the small installation, but we are talking about uh, big installation and uh, industrial type and uh, small um, offices or even big offices. That's the right thing to use. Uh, currently, we have one project with the 18 virtual rooms where you have 18 uh, air conditioning in the same building and there is no other way to control those units separately because it's a cool co automation it's a cost effective solution in such case so always please 
talk to us and we'll advise you what to do in different cases. Uh, I, I want to comment on uh, what Slava said now. If you have a VRF or VRV um, small project, uh, you can always uh, think about uh, calling Plug and Hub. So you, you, you don't, uh, we are splitting the solutions uh, to VRF and non VRF. But for example, if you have house with, uh, I don't know, VRF system and three or four indoor units, for sure, for this kind of uh, project, Cool Master Net, it's, it's, it's an overkill, but it's not, let's say, it's a less cost effective solution. In those uh, projects, you can definitely use Cooling Plug and Hub because uh, Cool Plug can connect to VRF indoors as well. So you can uh, match and mix. For example, if you have a small project, um, you can connect uh, Cool Plugs and Hub, even wireless. This, so don't be in this, uh, you know, we are trying to... Uh, targeting each of our devices to each of type of uh, HVC, but uh, for example, if you have small, relatively small project, um, you can use the cool pack, no problem. First, I suggest in those cases, uh, advice uh, with us or uh, with uh, digital home systems, a uh, pre-sale team, uh, but uh, just remember that you have a more cost-effective option for uh, small VRF VRV systems. Thank you, Eugene. I believe we will stop at this point. Uh, thank you, everyone who was uh, on that webinar. Thank you and good night. Bye bye, everyone. Okay. Thank you.